Howdy, everybody, and welcome. Ooh. Fan requested, baby. It was special fan requested from my boy, Wayne, a.k.a. Carter Dredention. Pick this one out, Uncle Bill. And he specifically asked, baby, for a special guest to be on here. So we welcome him. Rambo Raff for Life, Matt. <laughs> We got to talk about some Kevin Smith tonight, man. It's going to be, uh, I think it'll be fun. How are you doing? I the first thing we need to talk about is that Ozzy doing Run Up That Hill? Hey, hell was that? Kind of. Kind yeah. of. Oh my God. Yeah. What kind of world are we in? Jesus H. Christ. So I'm curious, Matt. Like, how do you feel about the fact that somebody just basically wanted to torture the hell out of you tonight? <laughs> There's no other reason for you to do this. Well, I was Carter thinking. Denton, man. Thanks I was... to him, I resaw Yoga Hoser. So he owes me something. Yeah, it, well, it's only something. fair. Okay, so since Dead Pit got paid kind of for this, you do requests. So if somebody pays you a certain request that involves Dead Pit, we are down. Sounds good to me. So that makes it kind of fair, make it, I guess. Make it a good yeah. movie. As long as it's <laughs> not like Jeepers Creepers 3 again or no, Jeepers. That was Jeepers Creepers 4. Jeepers Creepers Reborn. We'll give anybody any more ideas, but we already did. It's funny. I just got requested. Movie. I just got requested to review Jeepers Creepers 3. I just watched that two oh, days ago. Man, I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel bad about that. Oh my yeah. god, where his car is like Batman's car. You have you know, uh, dropping bombs and interesting javelins. requests on pretty much a weekly basis on your channel, like stuff that I'm saying, like God bless bulls. Like, oh yeah, Monster was a classic. Yeah, did you enjoy Monster. that song, Matt? Number two, number two. <laughs> <Man's> <laughs> like poop. The fact that people took like two years to make that movie, I'm like, wow, one life wasted <laughs> making that movie. Well, I'm sure somewhere, I'm... somewhere in the bowels of uh, storage, I've got like a signed poster from like everybody that was in that film, <laughs> the directors and everything. Uh, that was, that was a film that came out right when we were doing, like we were writing to people and doing autographs and things like that. Like I've got. Like, Did we whole... review that movie back in the day? Yeah. I think we've seen it. Yeah, I yeah. don't. I can't remember, but they had. Um, if I'm not mistaken, now I think that this was the movie. They had monster chocolate bars that had the monster logo on it. And it was, uh, yeah, they sent us a wrapper, I think, and signed it or something, right? They had a whole <laughs> promo thing going off that movie. But anyway, tonight's a waste little... of money. Waste of money. <laughs> you know, it really yeah, was. Congrats. We are doing a little bit of a different sort of show tonight because this doesn't really involve horror movies at all i mean technically i think maybe a couple of these movies would be considered kind of horror movies i don't know but interestingly enough as long as we've been doing the dead pit show we have never discussed these kevin smith movies the only one that i could find that we talked about briefly was after I think it was after I watched Tusk and I talked about it on a show. All these other movies, I don't think we ever discussed Uncle Bill in the long history of doing the show. I'll tell you, when I was getting ready for this show, I was like, I should probably like go find some Blu-rays of his, you know, so I can show them when we were doing it. I don't own a single Blu-ray of any of his films. Everything that I've got's on DVD and none of it's like, I don't own any anything like I just think it's because I don't buy comedies on Blu-ray either though. Like and that's the majority of his films. Like I just well don't have anything. Odd you mention that because interestingly enough, I think I own almost everything up to a point that he did on Blu-ray. Now there's a couple that I still just have on DVD, but it's unusual how many of his movies that I have on Blu-ray. Like I was kind of surprised by that because I don't, I mean, I like his stuff, but I'm definitely not a mega fan of Kevin Smith and the, the view askew, view askew universe or whatever the hell they call it. 
Um, the view askew, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not an expert on it. Uh, my my thing is horror movies typically, but I do like the movies, and we're gonna go through them and touch on each each one of them, boys, because I went back the ones that I had never seen. I watched them all, pretty much all the way through, aside from one that I just couldn't. I was like, nope, can't do it. I know which one that is. In <laughs> fact, that is the one that I just was like, I might as well throw this away. This thing is going in the garbage because I'm never going to watch it again. There's no point in me having it. I wasted a dollar at Dollar Tree on it. Not even worth a dollar. So I threw that one in the trunk. But the rest of them I still have here. So, uh, But we're, we're going to talk about them, I guess, in chronological order. You guys... Want to get started? You want to do a little bit of a roll call? We got a ton of people in here. Already over a hundred people in the chat. I mean, I don't think I can keep up with like because it's going pretty fast. But I'll give you an idea just to name some people that are in here. The mayor's in here: Carter Dention, Bobby Yaga, uh, Sean Four Twenty, Saturn Video, Mid Level Media's in here. Oh yeah, uh, Nikki B, Nikki B, uh, the Bog Zombie, Victor Benacourt, Crater. Crater's in here, boys. Holy shit. The man they crater. call Crater. It's Crater time. Crater time. Attention fan. Uh, yeah. That's about what I got. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, um, on the community tab on the Dead Pit YouTube page, have a poll up. It's been up for almost, uh, well, about a week and a half, two weeks or so. And... The deal with that is that I asked you guys what you thought the worst Kevin Smith movie was. So I guess we'll remind me towards the end of the show and we'll get the final tally on that. Last I checked, over 200 and some people had voted. So that's pretty damn cool. So That's an easy that, one, too. That's a, that's a no-brainer, really. Yeah. So after we get done with all these movies, we're going to see which one the fans voted the worst Kevin Smith movie. That's, I guess that's, that's funny. This guy says the kid from Sleepaway Camp, Ricky. I guess he's not a fan of Kevin Smith and called him a hack. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's he the thing. Man. Camp crap like, on you. <laughs> like he, it's really um, for the past probably ten years been pretty, pretty popular to call Kevin Smith a hack. Mm -hmm. So much to the point that he kind of like brings it up. And to be honest with you, like there was a whole string of movies that he made leading up to now that would probably lead anybody to believe that he was a hack. But, but going back and doing this, you know, filmography, there was a period of time, a pretty good chunk of time in where he made some really good films. And I mean, they're not like, he was never an expert, like cinematographer or anything like that. They're not no, those kind of films. He wasn't a visual director. He was a good writer though. Yeah, he's he knew how to handle his characters early on. Yeah, he was. A good, I would he, say he, it's he, one of the rare exceptions where the script was the star. Of most of these movies, right? The dialogue. I'll tell you something else he did really well too in the beginning is casting. He cast these people into like perfect kind of parts for their strengths, but like that, that I think completely fell apart when he went Hollywood. Like the people that he cast in those later movies was just god yeah. awful but in the beginning probably the first 10 years it was pretty spot on man yeah he kind of had like a repertory group of actors that he kept i guess they went to film school together i mean i don't know the story there if they all knew each other from just that community in new jersey is making movies or whatever i know he it. and he and scott Mosier knew each other from film school they briefly went to film school together yep. and then yep. Jason Muse was just a kid that hung around them all the time. That was kind of like in the area where he worked and everything. And he just thought he was funny because he just talked that way. He kind of talked the same way as like the character, you know, in, in terms of the shit that he said. So he cast him in those movies. That's those are the ones that I know of for sure. Like, I don't know about like all the other, all the other ones or anything. Mm -hmm. Well, he had a local casting uh, for Brian O'Halloran and Jeff Anderson and the original idea was that Kevin Smith was going to play the Jeff Anderson role, a Randall. But he said, there's too many lines. I can't remember them all. I'll just play the silent guy because I got to direct this people. 
So then he cast Jeff Anderson. And that was from like a local casting. Uh, they just had auditions. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that leads us up to Clerks, which was his debut movie, writer, director, editor, and producer. This movie was made for like a dollar fifty, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. When did you guys? Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Uncle Bill was the one that maybe introduced me to this movie, and it was a few years later. Like it wasn't. I got, I think I vaguely remember the videotape in the store, but not really knowing what it was. Do you guys remember your introduction to Clerks? How long ago it was when you first saw it? Yeah. I mean, I can, I can remember like watching it because at that time he was kind of like this movie came out of nowhere and it was held as like, you know, the next coming of, I don't know even who you would compare like it to, but all, you know, these indie film directors were getting like immensely popular and he was like one of the first ones besides that. What is that one guy, uh, that did slackers, um, Richard Linklater. Richard Linklater, yeah. So in that same kind of vibe was, you know, Kevin Smith came along. And I remember watching the movie, and it was really the first movie that I can remember watching where I was kind of like mesmerized by the dialogue completely. Like, I just thought it was one of the funniest fucking movies, especially the shit with Jay and Silent Bob. You know, that's kind of gotten to the point where it's like, it's got go away heat now just because everybody's tired of it. But back at that time, that was a fucking hilarious concept. You know, the, the one guy never talks and the other guy never shuts up. And the shit that he says is just like Disgusting. crazy off the wall. Yeah. yeah. And to have it filmed in black and white like that. And just the way that he, that he told the story too. I just remember being fascinated by it. And then eventually like started watching all of his films. And this would have been, when did clerks come out? 94. Uh, 90, 94. So this would have been probably, I'm going to say 96 or 97 probably mm -hmm. like sometime when we were like later on in high school <laughs> not to give away our age or anything but like yeah so yeah my first copy that i actually purchased the clerks i no longer have is a laser disc but i think when we first watched it you may have brought the vhs tape up there or something like that but this is one i'm going to start pulling these out whenever we talk about the movies i do have the blue rev clerks which it's one of those movies that does it really benefit from even a Blu-ray? I don't know. I mean, it's very, it's black and white. Um, it's very well, I, th I think it's very well made though. Um, and put together and edited and everything. What's interesting though, is that the character, um, you know, Brian O'Halloran, Jeff Anderson, those two guys, I am shocked that they weren't really best friends because the chemistry that those two had, <laughs> together is partially what made that movie I mean, those guys you would not think that they were acting um and this is i don't think lot, they really were i don't think this they is a I lot acted. of dialogue i mean it, if you go back and watch these scenes this is a lot of freaking dialogue oh yeah um so but yeah uh 1994 interesting time for movies because if i'm not mistaken Pulp Fiction came out that same year, right? And it was another kind of independent movie. That's what I was getting ready to say, because we had talked about this before, that there was a period of time, a very short period of time, I think probably from 92 to around 97, something like that, where I feel mm -hmm. like Kevin Smith and Quentin Tarantino were like side by side in terms of people like this is the saying that this is the new generation of filmmakers. And then, you know, Tarantino just took it and fucking went with it. And Kevin Smith just a lot of a lot of really unlucky things happened to Kevin Smith, as well as like a lot of bad decisions <laughs> that I think played a role in him kind of being where he's at now and Tarantino being where he's at now. Um, but I mean, I'm sure he's fine. Uh, Kevin Smith with like his place and all this, but I just it fascinates me to no end that at one point in time, like they were considered on the same level you know like in terms of the right i don't think that's the case anymore um so yeah i mean we 
I don't know how long you guys want to spend on each of these movies because there's a lot of these movies to talk about. But everybody universally loves Clerks, really. I mean, if it's your sort of movie, like the common person, I don't know, like a housewife or something, probably not going to get into this this sort of movie. <laughs> but overall, if you like these kind of movies, everybody loves Clerks. Wouldn't you guys agree? I, it, yeah. It's I hard it, not to, yeah. Yeah, the simplicity of it, and it's one of those things that's in a weird way relatable. I think anybody who has any type of job, whether retail or not, either part of you wanted to say stuff like this, or you wanted to have conversations like this, or you did have conversations like this. Right. Maybe you didn't have you know guys dying in your bathroom from a heart on or with a heart on. Maybe. Well, I think that. some of these stories were based on loosely based on real life experiences, like the fucking guy looking for the perfect dozen eggs or whatever. I mean, it does sound like characters that you would see in you know these convenience stores or gas stations or you know just <laughs> regulars that that see these weirdos. Interestingly enough, though, one of the big things, because I had the laser, the laser disc was like the best quality copy you could get forever and ever. Like, I don't know what took the DVD so long to come out, but it was one of those that didn't come out until like 2004, 2005, something like that. So I remember watching the laser disc a few times before I ended up uh, getting the DVD. And they had deleted scenes on the laser disc. And I remember the deleted scene well i guess the alternate ending that they had <laughs> so kevin smith has been trying to fucking kill off dante for since the beginning really yeah yeah that's you know. true he succeeded and, i think uh, yeah somebody said it perfectly though it's kind of like it was the perfect independent film at the perfect time really and somebody else earlier said who can't relate to that movie in some way or another like you know, being at a point in your life where you're either working a dead end job that you fucking hate or that you're trying to make a decision about like, if you want to keep staying in the same place or move on or like what the hell you, you know, doing with your life really. And just the, that mix with the rapid fire dialogue and just to me, Jeff Anderson is that fucking movie. I mean, like he's the reason why I go back and watch that movie really just his he has amazing comedic timing he's got the best lines like you said because that was supposed to be kevin smith right he's just the best character in the movie to me well that that character exists for real back in the video store days though because most of the time at these video stores were these asshole clerk like smart yeah. asses that would kind of like make fun of anything that you rented or whatever. The sort of guys that kept me away from seeing Halloween three for many, many years. Yeah. Right. Because they would Ooh. bitch about it. Oh, that movie's stupid, man. <laughs> you don't want to see that. So <laughs> it takes you back to the, to the mid nineties video store eras. Damn. Damn. I mean, it's hard to believe that's, <laughs> what is that now? That's 30 years ago, 30 year anniversary. Yeah. This yeah. Year. Well, you think though, like who didn't know somebody like that at one of those stores that was like, you know, an elitist right. kind of movie guy that was kind of, you know, a prick. About I almost stuff. was one of those guys because I worked at a video <laughs> store for a couple of years called right. Mr. Movies. <laughs> so I almost was one of those guys. So there you go. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I mean, yeah. Would you it's like just... some making fuck Berserker? Berserker. Anytime anybody says anything with Berserker, that song immediately plays in my head, man. <laughs> like, it just does. Like, the, it's, it is an infinitely quotable fucking movie. Like, there's every, pretty much every line of dialogue in that movie you can quote. And Dante's girlfriend sucking on, you know. Yeah. 36 finding, dicks finding, in a row? Yep. Yeah. Finding that out yeah, in a row. My favorite I'm scene, though, in the movie is when Randall's reading off all the titles of like the porn that <laughs> yeah. he's getting in. And that yeah, in front of this <laughs> woman with little kid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, shit. Oh, man. I would say my favorite bit, and I can't say the dialogue, but Jay Muse, one of the last things, because at first he's trying to be nice to Dante. 
And then he just throws, fuck this place. You can't smoke her. <laughs> He's like, he just trying to <laughs> help him. And then he just yells at him and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Halloween. Yeah, that was on the titles. <laughs> Somebody posted that. Oh God. They I used a, found him. Yeah, Dorian. Yeah, I was gonna say that they used like and I'm not I'm not certain on that I don't I'm not an expert on this band, but there's like an Alice and Chains song in this movie. Was this before Alice and Chains was like a big band or like Nani I I don't remember. 92 would the grunge that. thing would have been. I don't know though, man. Because Alice and Chains. So curious how they got. Yeah, how they got some of these songs in in the movie. I mean, it may have been after it got picked up by a big it studio was. or something. Oh, okay. I think uh, was a, maybe it was Mirror Max, but they 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 put the songs after it to try to, and then that was part of the the marketing is soundtrack. This is when people yeah. cared about soundtracks back in the oh, day. Yeah. I mean, when was the last movie uh, than Guardians of the Galaxy? But I'm like uh, other actual movies that they talk about the soundtrack or they market it. Very rare nowadays. That's kind of a oh, lost no. thing. Yeah. Well, back in the '90s, man, that became like a huge thing too, though. Like there was a ton of movies where like the soundtrack was almost the most important thing. Like Armageddon, you know, you'd have one big fucking song or a couple big songs that would like. You know that would almost sell the movie in some right. ways. Like yeah. Terminator Two. People know that song more than Dangerous Minds. I dare anyone to remember a plot point Dangerous Minds, but you remember Gangsta's Paradise. Oh yeah, from uh, what was that movie with Michelle? Dangerous Minds. You said yeah. That. You remember Minds. the song? You don't remember the movie? Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, Carter Dinch with a five dollar super chat. Thank you, boss. Uh, Silent Bob talking at the end was such a legit, great, and surprising moment in the movie. Yeah, that become uh, Silent Bob's gimmick there. Yeah, and that you know the first time it happened, you were like, I can remember really being like stoked about these characters at that time, like just about how new and kind of fresh that all was. And now it's like, you know, you watch, like I watched the Jay, I watched the Jay and Silent Bob reboot, and I'm like, dude. The Jay and Silent. The sad thing is, the Jay and Silent Bob re uh, reboot is nowhere near close to the worst movie that he ever did. Oh, in but fact, it's, it's uh, probably the it's probably the best of the last batch of movies it, that he did. You're right, but it does like if you look at those characters in that movie, and then you go back and look at them in like Clerks and Mallrats and stuff like that. You're like, I can't even believe that this. Is I kept watching for Jason Muse's teeth to fall out. Like the whole time. That's, that's tough watch, man. Dude, but anyway, yeah. clerks. Everybody loves clerks. Um, but yeah, we we've got a ton of movies to get to. So <laughs> the next one up was, and look here, the Arrow edition from The Goodwill on Blu-ray disc. Mall Rats, which I've always been a fan, a pretty big fan of this movie. But I think the reason why is the atmosphere. And I think Matt, you and I were talking about this last week. I mean, it's a fun movie. I I like the movie. It's but '90s malls, man. The shopping malls in the '90s. There was nothing like them because there's so many like like now. If I go into a mall, okay, Fye, I'll probably go in there and look around. If there's an Fye in the mall, Spencer's Gifts. Um, that's it. You know, malls don't have. Uh, music stores anymore. They don't have any of the toy stores anymore, bookstores anymore, any of that shit. Yep. Maybe Sbarro's Pizza sometimes in a food court, but this takes you back there if only for a day. 1995 Mall Rats is follow up. And um, what do you guys think about this one? Because this is kind of, I think fans overall are kind of mixed on this one. You either love it or you hate it, it seems like, with the hardcore Kevin Smith fans. That was my first uh, introduction to them. Because, uh, long story short, the reason I heard about Kevin Smith is my brother's girlfriend at the time, who later became his wife, was a fan of Kevin Smith. And I had overheard my mom asking my brother, hey, what does your girlfriend want for Christmas? Oh, she wants Kevin Smith movies. I'm like, who the hell is Kevin Smith? 
And this was about 97, 98. Mm-hmm. At one point, it was a store. It was an original store called Shopco. And there was a VHS tape of a movie called Mall Rats. And honestly, it was like, oh, I love malls. <laughs> That's why I like Dawn of the Dead. So this is what this movie is. And like you said, it was. I like Jason Lee. I like seeing people like Michael Rooker, who looks like Lex Luthor. And it was the whole mall atmosphere that was because where I lived, honestly, there wasn't really much malls to begin with, except one that was a dinky one. So it was like me living vicariously through the characters and where we spend in a day with them. And the film didn't do well. The critics mm-hmm. hated it. It flopped. Uh, I know there was talk of like Kevin Smith wanted to be a raunchier movie. Universal wanted to be a bit of a cleaner movie. So there's a bit of a back and forth. But uh, I always enjoyed it. I think it's a fun one. It's definitely a goofier movie than Clerks. I think some people turned off by that. But I thought it was a nice... uh, It didn't... It was kind of similar. People in one location spouting pop culture. But it didn't feel like a carbon copy either. So I always enjoyed Ball Rats. I think it's a fun one. I fucking hated this movie when it came out. Um, I don't know why. Um, looking back on it, I, I'm not entirely sure why now because I, I guess maybe it was because I felt like it was like an inferior version of Clerks. Like it was basically the same movie in a mall that was just seemed like it was just copying that whole for, format or something. And probably the biggest reason I didn't like this movie, if I'm being honest, was I fucking cannot stand the guy. I think his name is um, Jeremy London. Mm-hmm. That and he's like one of the main <laughs> characters in the film. He plays Quint, I think, in it. I just couldn't fucking stand it. I couldn't stand his performance. I couldn't stand him. Like, as an, and from what I understand, wasn't he like high off his ass or something the entire time he was making this movie? And like, he's just, got a. Didn't he have a twin brother that also acts? Because Jason I get London. I get those two mixed up. Um, in in what movies? you know, they're in or whatever. One thing that I was curious about, maybe, uh, Matt, you know about this. So Kevin Smith, like, like we were saying earlier, he has like a, almost like a repertory group of actors that he goes back to and reuses and there's cameos and everything. Jeremy London. No, he is. I don't think he's ever been in anything else except mall rats. Do you know if there was some sort of issue with, with, with him working what- on the movie? That's what I was thinking. Was there not, Matt? It seems like he had a really hard time with that guy, from what I can remember. Somebody in the chat uh, was bound to know, too. I didn't hear anything about that. Uh, I don't know if it was for, I mean, for getting uh, dialogue or showing up late. There was something who, about that whole situation. Though. He was a fuck up. Uh, yeah, Kevin that was usually in his trailer smoking weed all the time. Yeah, so, like, it comes across because it's just a horrible performance. But I think looking back on this movie now, like this is where you get introduced to some of the characters too, that would like become like, like reoccurring characters. Jason Lee's fucking amazing in this movie. That's probably the, the best part of the film to me as Brody. And he comes, he's in like a ton of these view askew movies. He just keeps coming back as a reoccurring character. Um, but, yeah, because he was in a film before this called Drawing Flies, which is about a bunch of kids looking for Bigfoot, <laughs> and Kevin Smith had produced it, and he really liked Jason Lee's performance in that, and that got him cast in this movie. And it's a very, very little independent film. Interesting film, but um, he produced that one. You've also got Priscilla Barnes with three nipples in this movie. I would... I always yeah, kind of remember true. that. Uh, for some reason, I kept thinking it was Barbara Eaton, but it, it's Priscilla Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's been a while since I'd seen this one. Uh, you also get a shot of Joey Lauren Adams, uh, her uh, <sighs> young breasticles, and um, <laughs> yeah, Jay and Silent Bob are back. So basically, I mean, it's just the entire movie takes place in this mall. Um, it's a lot of fun, man. I do you like the movie now, Uncle Bill, or no? Yeah, I like it a lot more now than I did then because I can like kind of see 
more so like i mean it's in the same tradition as like his classic movies so for me it's kind of hard not to like when i compare it to like the shit that he does for the past 10 years like it's mm. it looks and sounds like it's a kevin smith movie it was like, a was. gigantic flop when it came out stanley this was the very early cameo or maybe the first time he was in that playing himself in a movie as a cameo and this is another interesting fact for you guys. So this was 1995. Stan Lee in 1995 was 73 years old. <laughs> what the fuck? And he just recently passed away. I'm like, holy shit, dude. That guy had to be close to 100 years old or something. Yeah. All right. Um, but yeah, he's got a he's got a good part in the movie though. It's a, it's a great cameo. And this was like Definitely, I think if this movie had come out maybe 10 or 12 years later, it probably would have been a bigger hit. Because at this point in time, like comic books and shit like that was kind of dead, right? I mean, there were no comic book movies really around this time. Let me ask you a question. Speaking of that, was he the first guy that really brought that into like popular movies like that? Like, I mean, the whole that that whole era of like comic books and collecting and things like that was he the first director that really highlighted that because i can't remember like anybody else doing that comic books were a big part of a couple of his early movies for sure oh man let me tell you something that time period you're talking about around like you know not from 92 on through the to the late 90s that's when i was buying comic books and shit that was a huge like boom period for comics man that's when the superman death shit happened and like, well, I think that around that time period, though, didn't that kill off comic books and shit, though? Like right after that? Yeah. What? Well, I mean, that whole kind of era did because did they kill Batman was, or whatever too? They they just got into this habit of like it became more and more popular because of the Superman thing. So then they started killing everybody, right? But the thing that really killed it was, the and then they started the, playing uh, Motorhead. Kill my <laughs> Well, the thing that really killed it's what's going to kill physical media, which is like they started having 40 different covers for every fucking comic book trying to, you know, get all the money from the fans and shit. You had like a holographic cover and a silver color and a direct edition and a regular edition. And people just were finally like, fuck this, man. Like it just got goofy. So, yeah. Um, Anything else you want to say about mall rats? Because we got a go, bulls. We got a flow through the. We got a lot of fucking movies to talk about. Well, some of these we ain't gonna say a whole lot about, man. I'll right. But some of these early ones, I think we want to talk about a little bit. So yeah, mall rats was a, was a fucking failure. It didn't do anything, right? I don't even think it stayed in theaters that long. Um. So there was really no. Oh, we got a super duper chat over here, baby. From or it's a super sticker was. Super, super, super sticker, yeah. sticker from Kathy Bradshaw. Thank you so much, Kathy. It's J real sister. He's got her into checking these live streams out. So it's very cool. Thank you so much. But this one is the only one, this next movie that I felt safe watching with my wife. And it, even it was a little bit iffy, right? But I mean, it's just kind of a love story going on for most of this movie. So I was thinking, well, maybe this is something that she'll kind of halfway like. And I think she she did, kind of. We're talking about Chasing Amy from 1997. It's another movie that kind of result, revolves around comic books, but it's kind of like a unconventional love story, Uncle Bill, and a comedy all thrown into one. I'm going to tell you something right now. After going back and watching pretty much every one of these movies again, this is his best film. To me, it's... The casting is fucking perfect. The atmosphere of it's perfect. Uh, Jason Lee is perfect in it as the friend and like all the stuff that happens. Like it's just, to me, it's just his, but and not only like because of all that, but also because like it actually had a pretty good plot and purpose. Like it wasn't just set up around people hanging out or whatever. There was an actual kind of like message to the film as well. I just, yeah. I just think it's his best film. Jason Lee is great in this movie too. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah like, he's perfect. Some of the stuff that he says and just the timing of it, like the, I mean, I don't want to give it away. Cause I don't know if a lot of people have seen this movie. Really? I don't know how easy this movie is to, 
uh, buy anymore because a lot of Kevin Smith's older movies, for some reason, especially, well, this was another Miramax one, which, hey, yeah, I got it, boy. Um, the scene where, like, uh, the Holden character has the idea of what they need to do or whatever. Yeah. And the girl. <laughs> <Great thing. laughs> and he's like, thank God, or whatever he says, yeah. you know. Where she, where she's like, don't, she's like, don't say it, and he says it, and like, then she flips out on him, and like, yeah, he's like, thank God. But uh, what do you think of this one, Matt? Chasing Amy. Yeah, I like it. Uh, I probably say I, I do like Clerks and Morats more, but I do like it. I mean, I like Ben Affleck and uh, Jory Lauren Adams was dro- uh, Tim Smith's girlfriend at the time. And uh, she's one that kind of disappeared as the years went on. You like, never really, other than other Kevin Smith films, mm-hmm. not even too many after that. This is, other than Reboot, this might have been the last time she was in a Kevin Smith film, except for maybe a cameo, but at least in a bigger part. Uh, yeah, she had that thing like the, like we talk about Jill Shawell and that, that kind of she has. It's like the, the bubbly girl next door that you just like, like everything that she's in, she's a very likable character. Um, I think people kept getting her to feel with Renee Zellweger or something. Yeah. Something. Like she, there. Would, she would say like, people would come up and say, Hey, Renee. And it's like, I'm not Renee. <laughs> I'm not Renee Zellweger. So I feel bad though. Cause she's really good in this movie. Um, I mean, she's, she's excellent. Um, uh, mm-hmm. And even Ben Affleck is good. I hate, I fucking hate Ben Affleck. I mean, most people, (laughs) most people do now, but like around this time period, he wasn't the Ben Affleck that people like think of now. Like he was actually trying to do shit. There's also, um, I think it's this movie. Isn't Matt Damon briefly in this movie? Where there are buddies. Like I think it's this one. And maybe he might've been in mall rats too. I can't remember. But yeah, I I mean, very small role. But basically an yeah, extra maybe, maybe. role. Yeah. Um, yeah, kind of an unforgettable ending with this one. Um, Silent Bob's speech is pretty legendary, and that's where they actually get the name of the movie, uh, which I've always remembered that part too. Uh, I think Kevin Smith wrote the best, you know, the dialogue in the whole movie for him. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've always this is this may be my favorite Kevin Smith movie too. But continuing on, since we've got to get through these. And I am taking offers on this, by the way. Where is it at? Uh, God damn it. Oh, I know what this it? is going to be. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this shit, boys. Now, this is like worth its weight in gold. All right? So throw me some offers. It really offers. is. Dogma. And isn't this one, didn't you say, um, they're holding this ransom or something? Like, what's the story with this? Why this isn't Yeah, out? the... Long story short, that was first made with kind of a Disney or subsidiary of Disney. But then the Catholic League was so mad about it being anti-religious of various forms. So it got pretty much bought by the Weinsteins, Harvey, and he bought it. And then Miramax released it in theaters. I think maybe Dimension or something at home. Miramax or Dimension Mm -hmm. at home. But now that Harvey Weinstein owns it pretty much. Uh, he wants money for it. Probably for his auto, get more food for his fat ass in prison. I don't know, but <laughs> he got nothing else to do in prison. Uh, maybe get his butt fucked. Or he's, he's getting commissary with that. Fucking, yeah. He needs more toilet paper for mufflers for his ass. He'd rather, he'd rather it go in that end than the other. Right? Isn't he supposed <laughs> to have dementia or some shit that he made up to get out of, going to jail good he deserves it but it's one of those scenes where yeah kevin smith said that uh, i don't really you know i it's a lot of money to pay for it until i guess someone twists his arm that's weinstein you're not going to see that for a while on a home release maybe eventually but not anytime soon mm-hmm but yeah, that's why that Blu-ray is out of print. It's like a hundred dollars at least 
So I'll I'll take a hundred dollars for it if anybody's interested in the chat. <laughs> hundred dollars, uh, he'll rock for you party. Go yeah, we'll rock for you party, boss. Jason Lee is actually in the chat tonight, guys. So we got a little bit of a celebrity in here. So thank you, Jason, for thank you, Jason. Thank you. Love Dean Alvin the Chipmunks. That's what my <laughs> wife knew him from. She was yeah, like, I "Oh, mean, he's an Alvin the Chipmunks boss." That's a big deal. <laughs> So, yeah, I think Dogma may be the very first Kevin Smith movie that I ever saw. I think Uncle Bill was the one that showed it to me, and I was like, God damn, this movie is fucking insane. Right? <laughs> and I was sh shocked that they had a major studio that was willing to put this movie out for just the content itself. I mean, I don't, uh, you know, it's hard to imagine this around that time period, but, like, it's even more ballsy of a move to have put that movie out when they did in terms of the content of it um, and things. And one of my favorite stories of anything that Kevin Smith's ever done is where he protested this movie himself. And the reporter walks up to him and is like, aren't you Kevin Smith, the director? He's like, no, he's like, I get that all the time, but I'm not him or something like that. And she's like, are you sure you're not him? He's like, yeah, <laughs> it's him and like somebody else. I forget what the fucking sign he held up was, but it was great. Uh, protesting his own fucking movie. So, I mean, a familiar cast in this one as well. Now, this is the first movie that Matt Damon's given more of a big role in, uh, uh, you know, for a Kevin Smith movie. And, you know, since this time, both of those guys, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, had won Academy Awards and everything. Wasn't it like Goodwill Hunting or something like yeah. that was the movie? Yep. So, they're both pretty much household names. And this was an interesting follow-up to that <laughs> because this is like, this is about anti-Hollywood movies you could get for a Hollywood movie. Uh, Chris Rock is in this. Alana, oh, Alanis Morissette plays yeah. uh, God in it. Um, people around it's, here was mad. At this movie pulls. It's one of my favorite <laughs> movies of his though, man. Like, to be honest, it's, it might be right up there as like second or third or something. I'm not sure. But like, I just, I watched this movie over and over again back then too. Um, it's funny as hell. Like for one thing, like Jason Muse, I think he was on Coke or something throughout the entire running of this movie. I think that's what Kevin Smith said. So he's like completely like all over the place, like on. And he's, he's great. I hate to say it. it. He was a better actor when he was on drugs. I hate to say it, but it's true. <laughs> also though, like it's interesting, the Blu-ray, like they had the fucking poop monster on the front cover, like dead center. Yeah. Like with that, I don't <laughs> think they could do that today. I don't think that they would. What company did this one? Sony. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. mm. Poop PT, monster, if you monster. go back, if you go back and listen to Kevin Smith, uh, Muse would would oscillate between cocaine and heroin all the time. So, yeah, he was, I guess, one to put like get him up and one to put him down, like Elvis or something. But Dogma, I mean, uh, financially, was it a? I didn't really look the finances up on this. Was this a big money making movie? But I. I'm not sure, but it definitely got Kevin Smith's name out there. I think all the controversy surrounding this movie and the fact that Ben Affleck and Matt Damon's follow up movie uh, it, was. It made was three times his. budget. It was like okay. 10 million and made like 30 million. So for Kevin Smith, it was definitely the biggest hit at that time. So it worked well enough for him. And, and you know who you don't ever hear about anymore? Who I thought was a really good actress is Linda Fiorentino. Um, who's basically the lead in this mm -hmm. movie, really. Uh, she, I always thought she was really good, man. And like, mm -hmm. you never like hear anything about her anymore. She I don't never know. Maybe... really got that big break. And did she ever really have like a huge hit movie though? I don't think she ever did. Did she? Last Seduction. She was think... in the Last Seduction Men in Black. Men in Black. Has... Yeah. Men in Black is probably the biggest movie she was ever in and she had like a, a smaller part in that really i mean she was, what, I understand she was like, like she was like hard to deal with 
I heard that was the Tuesday maybe that's why because I know even Kim Smith wasn't really big on her. He kind of wished he would have cast someone else in the lead. That's why you didn't see her. In the that's what the chat's saying too is that she was a huge bitch. <laughs> like, so that probably explains <laughs> that. Yeah, what happened? That makes it. sense now. Yeah, you know all the people that Kevin Smith worked with one time, they're all assholes or bitches. Um, so continuing on. Now, from what I can remember, this is two thousand one, two thousand two thousand one, something like that. Uh, Jay and Silent Bob strike back. This was supposed to be the finale for all of the Viewisk Universe people, right? That's what he had said. He said, this is it. We want to have one last big movie with all these characters in it and everything. And then I'm moving on to greener pastures. Yeah, because he said he was tired of cleaning up uh, Jason Mewes from the drugs. So it was like, fine. I'm going to do one bit movie, Jane Son Bob. You want to get some money. And then, you know, I can't keep cleaning you up with every film we do. And maybe somehow this is a jumpstart his rehab. It didn't. I think he just drank alcohol. I think for this one, uh, like, I forget which alcohol, vodka or something. Mm-hmm. So that's why he has a bit of a different look, sort of alky look. But uh, yeah, you're right. It's, meant to be the last one at this point i love this movie though man like it's the perfect like stupid ass stoner movie like really <laughs> it's right up there with, like half baked and you know uh how high and, like a lot of those movies are just stupid it, it's it it's pretty ahead of its time though because it's about them trying to stop hollywood from making a movie about them <laughs> like I mean, it's kind of <laughs> meta in that way. Yeah, Blunt Man but, and Chronic movie. They yeah. sold the rights or whatever, and they're making a big Hollywood movie with... Who the fuck was it supposed to be playing them? It's hilarious. Uh, oh, it's uh, it, it's fucking Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, isn't it? Because, like... No. No, uh, it's... Uh, it's, uh, it's um, James Vanderbeek. Uh, James uh, Vanderbeek and the guy from American Pie. Jason Biggs. Jason Biggs, Jason yeah. Biggs. And that's just <laughs> fucking great because these guys in 2001, before everybody else knew they were a joke, right? I mean, they were kind of serious actors still at this point. Dawson's Creek, I think, was still on, wasn't it? I don't know, but <laughs> never watched Dawson's Creek. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this was like pre before everybody started making fun of at least James Vanderbeek, right? Yeah, so. this was this was yeah when they those guys were actually kind of respectable still. I think he's probably doing varsity blues around that time. I don't want yeah. your life. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was. So I mean, he was uh-huh. he was probably still Wes Craven and Gus mm-hmm. Van Zandt have cameos. So I wonder where the Wes Craven came. Like, what's the story behind that? I know they were in Jay and Silent Bob were also in Scream Three. Were brought yep. in for a cameo. So I wonder how that relationship kind of started because that's kind of weird. Because Weinstein, Weinstein was very friendly with Kevin Smith, and from what I understand, he just called Kevin, "Hey, you want to do a cameo?" It's same same thing with uh, there was this Ninja Turtle movie in two thousand seven or so, and Kevin Smith has a cameo on that. Harry Weinstein would just call him, "Hey, you want to do this? You want to do a cameo?" Oh, okay, sure. Because Kevin Smith said yes to everything back then, so. Praetors admit that's that why he loves he loves varsity blues, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who doesn't? But this I, movie, though, man, like, there's a couple of scenes in this movie that I still, like, crack up to. The click commander scene and the fact that John Stewart and Will Ferrell are in this fucking movie, like, back at that time, too. And also... There's uh, a ton of cameo. Like, that yeah. become Kevin Smith's thing. Like, that was... It was almost annoying how many fucking cameos he starts to put in these movies. And I think it really started <laughs> hardcore with this one. Yeah. Yeah. Judd Nelson. You had Judd Nelson. I forgot. Yeah. Sean William Scott Steve. is the guy with the guitar and shit that gets in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's all over this Sco- movie. Scooby Doo. That's a weird ass scene to the Scooby Doo van. Scooby Doo. Well, yeah. they that enough that you can't get sued. There's a scene too that they recreated. I've got to flash this one up there. I'll do it. Where like you. he's thinking about uh, 
what was her name? Um, her character's name. Where uh, Justice Jay, Shannon Jess, Elizabeth. Jay is thinking about her, and like he's like, uh, you know, humping the air and shit inside the inside the <laughs> restaurant. It's a great scene. Yeah, I mean, think of, think of the scenes that he had with Shannon Elizabeth, man. And this was 2001 Shannon Elizabeth. He owes Kevin Smith a lot. That's all I'm going to yeah. say. <laughs> so, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, I think it was a pretty modest hit, right? It, it did pretty decent at the box office, from what I can recall. A lot of people were talking about it. Had, had a good buzz about it. Yeah, it did really. I think it had to do well on like DVD or VHS or whatever was out at that time because I remember everybody had that fucking movie at that time. Yeah. So continuing on though, his next movie was really like, I think that it was, he thought that this was going to be his big movie, that this was going to make his career. It was going to be a gigantic hit. This is where shit. (laughs) The studio had a lot of faith in it. Up to a point, I think. And then they were like reeling. Jersey Girl Boys from 2004. Romantic Save comedy. It. They had, what was it? Uh, what did they call them? Uh, Benifer? Is that what they called them back then? Yeah, this is when like yeah. that got huge. Like by the time they made this movie, that was already like in full effect. Well, and, and I can't Julia remember. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, did Geely come out before this? Right before. Fucking, I think it was shortly yep. before it. That's a yep. death kiss, man, and then, on this movie. Not only that, <laughs> but, like, the tabloids and stuff, everybody was talking about J-Lo and Ben Affleck. And the entire world got sick to fucking death of them as a couple. Yep. And then they had this movie, a starring vehicle for both of them, that was coming out a few months later. And then, like, I think the whole deal was... Which I actually don't mind the movie. I think the movie's pretty good. It's a different sort of movie for Kevin Smith. But like the original movie, they redid it, right? Because J-Lo had a much bigger part initially. And they edited a lot of it out due to the Geely thing. And the fact that people were getting sick to death of you know Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez as a couple. So the original cut of that movie was a little bit different. I'm not really sure you know, how much. But uh, I think that was a big thing, right? Yeah, the opening was a lot longer. It was a lot more of the two of them together before she dies in childbirth. And then we go to the, the next part of the, the the movie. And she probably can't remember if maybe she would have a cameo at the end. I don't know what, as a forced ghost. I don't know. But uh, something like, like that. Like a Harold but... Ramis CG version of... Uh... <laughs> In there. Um, <laughs> I watched this movie. Me and Savannah watched this movie last night, and um, I, I just don't like it. Like I, I was like, you know, maybe it'll be, maybe in time will kind of you know be good to it, and it'll play out better than you know the way that it kind of played out when it came out, and it's. It's not like fucking, you know, later movies Yoga are bad. <laughs> yeah. But it's just, it's not, it's so sappy and so just Hollywood and generic and just, there's yeah. a couple of scenes that you can kind of tell it's a Kevin Smith film, but for the most part, it's like anybody could have made this film. Generic and bland. I mean, it's, it's an, I think it's, watchable i think that little girl's annoying as pot the piss and i hate that i think the little girl's <laughs> well, was that, as she, that was like her only movie right did she do anything else after this oh god I thankfully remember, it was her only movie she i think it was yeah because they did like they had something about discovering her or whatever however they did it I well remember on the dvd <laughs> they put her back to where Just... she was discovered we turned the sender they they let her go she like a fish. They just put her back. To the yeah, bar. just just did go away. And this one has um, Will Smith cameo at the end, right? That one hasn't aged very well. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the whole thing is he's a record executive in the beginning of it, 
And like, there's this big Will Smith release party that he fucks up. So yeah, Will Smith is like at the end of the film. But no, you're right. That's an because originally that was supposed to be Bruce Willis because he's supposed to be working with the movies and Ben Affleck had worked with Bruce Willis on Armageddon. But I guess Bruce Willis just never answered back or he's said like, nah. no. Nah, he's like no. So they had to change it to. Will I, Smith. I tell you. I, I just really didn't like any of the characters in this movie either, though. I didn't like Ben Affleck's character in it. I didn't like, I, I didn't like, uh, what's her name? Liv Tyler. I didn't like her fucking character in it. Like the little kid, like you said, was annoying. Like George Carlin was the only decent character in the whole damn movie. And he's not in it that much. I mean, so it's like just a really crappy version of, of trying to make something like chasing Amy or something like a, well, this, uh, this one's definitely more run of the mill. Like there's really nothing in it that's crazy memorable or anything. It's really a product of its time. Like I remember I think it was maybe the TV spot or maybe a trailer where the little girl is setting Liv Tyler and Ben Affleck and there were like that was a bit and that was not even that I mean, who gives a shit? Why do you include that in a trailer? Like it's not even that funny, you know. Uh, but I think that Kevin Smith thought that, man, this is the t- the timing of this. The fact that Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are starring in it. This yeah. is going to be the one that makes me. And yep. I mean, had it come out like eight months earlier or something like that, it could have been a different story. Who knows? But unfortunately, that mm. piece of shit Jelly movie or whatever come out shortly before that this one. And it just people got sick to death of that then there it, was, it was probably the worst timing and this is what i said when i said earlier like a lot of bad luck a lot of bad break this is probably the first one where it's like all that came together to basically just make sure that this movie fucking bombed um it's it, it, it didn't deserve to bomb like that even though i don't like the movie it's not that but it didn't deserve to shit the bed like that it's it's just okay i mean it's an average film so two years later, boys, he finally makes a Clerks sequel. And I mean, I like the movie Clerks too. I'm not going to shit on the movie itself, but for Kevin Smith as a filmmaker, I think that this was basically saying, okay, I, I, I can't do it. I, I can't take another chance. So let's go back to something that I know will you know, be a success or whatever. I can't do another Jersey girl or anything. So he goes back to these characters, which a lot of people at the time were like, how in the fuck can you do this, man? What in the hell are you doing? But the chemistry still worked with those guys. But at the same time, like almost for this entire movie, I was thinking this is desperation. Him doing a sequel. What do you guys think? Uh, I mean, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, man. No, I would say you're right. I mean, the documentary for it is literally called Back to the Well. <laughs> uh, but I guess the way I look at it is it's the last Kevin Smith film I like or love. After this, I hate all this shit. It all go to hell to me. <laughs> well, uh, spoiler <laughs> alert, yeah, for the rest of the show. <laughs> yeah, because. <laughs> Heck yeah. In a weird way, it's like the perfect bookend. It starts with Clerks, it ends with Clerks 2. The way that ended, the way the characters ended, the characters are on a happier note than they were at the end of the first one. Uh, The characters you see, like Randall, grow as a person, and then they completely forget about that in Clerks 3, which we'll get to. They just flush that down the toilet. Yeah. I thought I like Rosario Dawson. I like her as an actress. Uh, it being in a fast food place, I thought it was the right environment. Um, I didn't give a rat's ass about the donkey show. I'm like, whatever, you know, just, just threw that in there. But uh, yeah, I like the the characters. I like the dialogue, and I thought that is when he should have ended his. Not only his career, but at the very least these characters. Like people, I don't know what this yeah. is with people not understand. Learn from the ending of the first Rocky. What I mean by that, when you watch the first Rocky, when they filmed it, the ending kept going. 
And I saw that the arms went like this, but then it went like this. So when you see the first rocket, it ends on the freeze frame with the HUD. They ended that way because that's the highlight. You can't get better. Everything else goes downhill. So many people, whether it be I'm a Rambo fan, the fourth one was a great ending. They make the fifth one. It sucks. So many of these people don't realize, stop milking your franchises because how many times has that worked out in a positive? Very, very rare. I could barely think of any. In the last 20 years, how many? In the last 20 years, (laughs) dude. Like, seriously. (laughs) Fucking Terminator movies, Indiana Jones movies, (laughs) Ghostbusters movies, Jurassic Park movies, Texas Chainsaw, (laughs) Halloween. Oh, you said it. it's true. Why do they never learn? Like, that's the question. Why, when there's such a pattern that you see everywhere, why does barely anyone I, learn this? I don't think they care about the product. I just think they care about like the quick money, the name, you know, so they're willing to, to destroy the whole kind of, you know, whatever of the franchise or the, the name just to make, a little bit of money because that's really what matters right they um, definitely done that with ghostbusters like i can give a fuck if i ever see another ghostbusters movie or aliens or fucking <laughs> oh any of the God. any marvel movie like i give a fuck less about any of that stuff but clerks 2 is in my opinion it surpasses clerks in a couple of ways i think that um What's in color uh, this time? Well, well, Randall is probably <laughs> like he's in it a lot more. He's like you know, and he is again like he still he burns the down as, the quick stop, right? Yeah, as does like well by accident, of course, by accident. Yeah, uh, Elias, the, the character of Elias, and him like the chemistry between those two is great. Um, Jay and Silent Bob is great in it. Uh, I just think, like you said, Rosario Dawson's amazing. Like. Would be would have been the amazing, the most perfect kind of like <laughs> person for him to settle down with. Had you know, Clerks Three not happened. Um, but I agree with everything Matt said, and I think that it's like right up there in the top four of his movies. Really, it's insane that it's that good. It has no right to be that good. Right, man. it's a lot better right. than it should have been. Yeah. I mean, that you you know you would think it would be. Um. Yeah, I mean, I had fun with the movie, but every time that I see it on or see it, I'm like, okay, this was his desperation movie. He had to, he had to go back to the well, like you were saying. And I'm sure Jason News was excited though. He, you know, he got oh, to work yeah. again after five years or whatever. Um, so I mean, had Clerks the story ended there, I would have been fine with it, but it didn't. No, Still not tril- there had to be a trilogy. So like there's the return <laughs> of the Jedi. Uh, yeah. So, um, the next one I did not rewatch, but I remember actually liking the movie quite a bit. And this is kind of, was this one that he wrote? Yeah. He was the writer, director and editor on this one too. Zach and Mary make a porno. This and movie remember there were two di- his life, two different versions of this though. Didn't they in Walmart? Didn't they bleep out? The the porn Zach and yeah. Mary make something or whatever. Just called Zach and Mary, yeah. Or Zach and Mary. Um but yeah, I mean from what I can recall, I like this movie, but I have not seen it probably in ten years or longer. There's nothing wrong with this movie, but like Matt has said a million times too, and like it bears the repeating, like this movie really broke Kevin Smith. <laughs> <laughs> it really did like well it was a flop too right it, it didn't make any money at all um this was his who was the uh fucking judd a- judd apatow is that his name yeah the guy that his, makes all the comedy his, his movies at the time were kind of popular right Not and there the were 40 year old virgin yeah and there were other movies that were like around this same time period like miss march and shit like like kind of vulgar like teen comedy sort of movies so i think this is kevin smith's attempt to do something like that he's like oh these type of movies are popular right let's let's make this you know we'll call it zach and mary make a porno and they had real porn stars in it i do remember that 
Yep. Um, Jason Muse is in it. I think he's pretty fucking hilarious in it, if I'm not mistaken. He was, I think he was on Crystal Meth at this point, right, Uncle Bill? <laughs> I mean, it looks like it from like what happened. No, later he was on. clean and sober. Uh, from then on, he was clean and sober. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> can't believe it. I can't believe it. <laughs> But yeah, so, to me, it's, it was him. I just didn't feel the passion from him. I think he wanted the copy John Apatow because he saw that they made money. And he had films like Role Models, all these movies making like 60, 70 million. He thought I was going to make that. It didn't. So then he baked and waked his mind to oblivion to the point he had barely any brain cells left for the rest of his career except crying at trailers for Marvel movies. That's where the rest of his two brain cells went to. Gotta cry another Marvel TV show or trailer or uh, someone with a cosplay or someone with the Superman up his ass or something. Ooh, it's beautiful. Fuck the, Kevin uh, Smith at this point. It, 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 <laughs> it may be the last Kevin Smith movie, though, that actually even remotely feels like a Kevin Smith movie that, you know, wasn't just a reboot or a remake or something like that. Um, it had Katie Morgan and Tracy Lords were the porn stars in it, and Justin Long is actually good in it, which he's not usually good in these. They start of using him a lot too in these yeah. movies. Jesus Christ! Um, I don't mind it, but I you're right. There, I there is like Seth something. Rogen. I thought well, Seth Rogen I mean, was really annoying. Yeah, right? Nobody likes Seth Rogen if you think about it. Really, um. He's another one of them guys. I could add him to that fucking list of people that it's just like. Yeah, he gets popular there and he's in all kinds of these stupid ass movies. Like, why? Jake Gyllenhaal, <laughs> Seth Rogen, Tom Cruise can all blow me. But um, I don't mind this movie. Tom Cruise it's just, is a bit better than Seth Rogen. <laughs> yeah, I'll say that. I don't know. Is he? Fourth of July. <laughs> it's easy. Risky Bidneth, baby. Risky Bidneth. <laughs> Rain uh, Man, come on. Yeah, Rain Man's a classic. But it, Rain Man's a classic Cruise. because of Dustin Hoffman, not Tom Cruise. <laughs> what else is Tom, Tom Cruise? Cruise is All the right around. moves, man. All the right moves. That All the right one. moves, yeah. Jerry Maguire. Um, um. <laughs> so, before I forget about this, because I did get this ready, and we're right around that same timeline, I think. This was 2009, 2010. And a lot of people probably haven't, doesn't know this exists. There is an interview where Jay interviews Jay. Jay Real interviews Jason Muse at the Texas Frightmare Weekend. And this will give you a clear idea that the character of Jay is Jason Muse. This clip, it's, it's brief. Check it out, boss. Thank you. Texas Frightmare Weekend 2009. Two yeah. J's at one convention. Take your pick, ladies. Ha ha. I know who they're picking. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but have you ever seen What About Mary? Or was that so called? What About Mary? Oh. With the cum. Now look at my man's hair right here. <laughs> oh, yeah. like he's got a little cum in his hair. Now that cum is not from me, but it might have been from another. Maybe it was from uh, the Jason from Friday the 13th. I only he had one beer on. last night, so I, I was sober for most of the night. <laughs> Oh, oh, thank you very God. much. I'm going to get away from the sperm far as way as I can. <laughs> Thanks, oh, God. Well, with that in mind, well, stay tuned. No better way to close this. No, way to, no better way to close the convention with the sperm in my hair and Jason Muse pointing it out. So, bye-bye. <laughs> so, Jay had that little laptop thing back then, I guess. Yeah. It, it was just going everywhere. Not before. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> here's where the the, the the part of the show where the shit hits the fan balls and it never really lets up after, after this, this movie in particular and God both, I have no idea why I have this, but I do on <laughs> Blu-ray cop oh. out. No, no fucking way. No. <laughs> Just everything, everything about this movie. Just no, just shut anybody in here. If you like this movie, shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear it. There's no way anybody likes this movie. It's one of the Dude, worst pieces of shit. 
Tracy Morgan was probably the one of the worst Saturday Night Live people in the history of that show. There was only one character that he did that was halfway funny, and that was do you remember Brian Fellows, Uncle Bill on Saturday Night Live? But I'm that Brian was funny. Fellows. That's funny just because it's so goddamn bad. <laughs> <laughs> but Tracy Morgan, I guess this was like right after he left Saturday Night Live. I'm not really sure. God, man, this is this is unwatchable, really. I think, like, some bad horror movies are fun, but comedies, bad comedies, unfunny comedies are are no good. And that's what this it, is. It's not just Tracy Morgan, though, man. Bruce Willis is dog shit in this movie too. Like, he don't even look like he knows what where he, like what's going on, where he's at. Like, I mean, in hindsight, but I don't think. What year was this movie? I don't think this was an issue. 2010. Yeah, 2010. So we're talking 14 years ago. I don't think that was the thing with him. I just think he was literally just like checked out of this movie from beginning to end. Like he didn't give a shit. That's what it looks like to me. Now, Cop Out wasn't written by Kevin Smith, but he did direct and edit it. It yeah. did, did not feel like a Kevin Smith movie at all either from what I can recall. Now, I did not go back and torture myself and rewatch this, but Dude, like this was one of those movies that literally 20 minutes into the movie, I remember being like, fuck, this is bad. How did this even get out? Right. I, I watched this movie all the way through, unfortunately. Um, but the the best thing to come out of this movie is the uh, stand-up material that Kevin Smith got for those evenings with Kevin Smith where he talks about working with Bruce Willis and like, so there's like the mm -hmm. one where he talks about working with Bruce Willis post or I'm sorry, pre this movie when he did, what was it? Live free or die hard. I think mm -hmm. with him. Yeah. And then there's the one yep. where he talks about working with him on cop out. And it's like, you just, I mean, you just need to watch. That. That's all I can say. <laughs> I do have cop out. Yeah. Yeah. And that was actually still on the main shelf in there too. Oddly enough. <laughs> I don't know why, but you need to throw that away. I don't even know why you would keep throw it away. Why? Why would you have it? You ain't never gonna watch I'll, it. I'll throw it away with uh, nope, wants it. Yeah, you're never yoga gonna watch hosers. it. Just throw yoga it away. So I'll admit that was a film that when I first saw, I fooled myself into liking. I think because I was such a diehard Kim Smith fan at that point. Even Jersey Girl, like, I had not hated any of his stuff. I'm the type of guy I would listen to the commentaries multiple times. I'm like, it got to be good. It's Kevin Smith, you know, and Bruce Willis, yeah. and now we get to direct him. And like, how could it? I fail, love buddy like cop movies. I, and then, uh, yeah, I fooled myself into liking it. I bought the DVD or Blu ray. I'm like, this sucks. I hated Tracy Morgan. I mean, just the way he talked, he wouldn't shut up. It was like Chris Tucker on steroids. And it just, it's like, what was the conversation about going to the bathroom? And I took a dump of the bathroom there. And then, and then I would, I'm like, Sh well, shut you, could just, you, could tell, you could just tell, man, that like, they just let the cameras roll and tried to like let them improvise. And there's just these long, yeah, trying to be trying to be funny monologues that just go nowhere. And he kept them in there. Yeah. And they're just there's too many of those. There goes it's basically the whole movie. And I don't know if he just didn't have a good script or if well, they didn't have chemistry either. Like no, that was just a weird that was a weird combination of people. I mean this the stories I'm trying to get a baseball card. What kind of story is that? That's Go true. find a baseball card. Who was uh, a shit? Sean William Scott was like the the heel in it. He's the main bad guy in it. Is that right? I don't remember that. I remember yeah. Jason Lee was the son-in-law for Bruce okay. Willis's daughter. Yeah, it's been a while since I've, I've seen it, so I didn't go back and revisit yeah, Sean that William one, Scott, uh, by, by the way, Sean William Scott makes up most of his dialogue in this movie, too. Um, look, I don't know what the hell is going on in this movie, man. If he just was like, was improv 
improv uh, improvisation like a big thing at this time period. They were letting like people do that or something in movies, and he just was like, I think he All was. Right. He, he had such a tough time working with Bruce Willis, and he I don't think he never dealt with that before. And he was just so in love with Tracy Morgan. He would talk about how he just praised Tracy Morgan, and it's like he just let him do whatever. And he's not really known for action. It was that's not his wheelhouse. What did this movie do in theaters, by the way? Oh, shit. Anybody know? Not that go. well. I don't have that information there, in front oh, of me. I there's no way. I think it did better than I thought, though, because I looked it up. Like, it didn't, like, absolutely mm. shit the bed, like I thought. So, let's see. <clears throat> on a On a budget of $30 million. <laughs> oh, God. It made fifty five million worldwide, and that was yeah. probably just I mean, Bruce Willis's about, name, right? Maybe probably got that yeah. much. I mean, we talked about before. Kevin is not a visual f- storyteller. The scripts were the star, and then he didn't write the script. And this definitely was the star of this movie. As you know, Kevin Smith, oh. he's not. Yeah. He's a guy known for directing his own scripts. It's just it's the scripts, and he was over his head. He he tried something, he failed. <laughs> it, I, I mean, yeah, you can clearly tell like he didn't know what the hell to do with this movie because it's impossible to follow this movie too. Like, I mean, it's got a stupid um, premise, just like you said, Matt. But like, also, like they just introduce characters <laughs> out of nowhere, and like they don't really tie anything together. You don't really get to know anything about any of the characters or why you should hate them or like them or anything like that. Just people come in and out. It's just a bad movie. Like it's bad directing, bad pacing, bad acting, bad dialogue. It's just a bad overall fucking movie. But they do steal the music from Fletch. So at least yes. you can listen to Fletch music. <laughs> Was this his highest grossing movie? That's what Dick Fitzwill says. Well, fifty million dollars is fifty-five million is his highest gross. Thing. I, it makes sense. It might be. Yeah. Yeah. So, moving moving right along here, boys. Uh, the next year, this was done on a on the smaller budget, shot in twenty-five days. It's a horror movie. It had a kind of like a horror survival movie, I guess. Hell, I don't know. Had a little bit of a buzz online. And it got mixed reviews, I think, when it first came out. What do you guys, did you guys go back and revisit Red State? Yeah, I watched it the other day. How does it hold up? You'll never be able to convince me that this isn't a good movie. Just for Michael Parks and John Goodman alone, this is an outstanding movie, in my opinion. I thought it sucked ass. (laughs) (laughs) So there you go. Well, it just, it was like Michael Parks talked for like 30 minutes. I got so fucking tired of listening to it. And the ending is like not even an ending. It's like, we, we didn't have the budget to film an ending. So just, you know, that cool show don't tell. It was like, fuck that. And he just tells the whole ending. I'm like, Pfft. it was such a flat fart. Fuck that movie. <laughs> if people like it, that's fine. I, I wasn't it this based on like, shit. wasn't this around the time like the crazy, what cult church was it? The Westboro yeah. Baptist yeah. Church or something like that. Yeah. So it's loosely based on that. And it was kind of, he was kind of, you know, poking fun at him a little bit um, with that. Although, I mean, this is definitely a different approach for a movie for Kevin Smith. But I think at this point he was like, if it was something that he could make, money on he was going to try to do it you know uh when this was this or i might be mistaken this with like a rob zombie movie did he try to do this with fan funding or no i don't remember that okay i may be i'm not sure i mean you might be right i just don't remember it yeah there's a whole story about him screening this film for west the westboro baptist church in one of those evenings with Kevin Smith and like he got, I don't remember if he got death threats or they called him. Something happened with that. That freaked him out with that whole thing. This is another rare Blu-ray. 
Is this what he's talking about? How much is this? More? Proof. Sell that one, yeah. Give me a hundred dollars. I don't even I just, remember. I think that it's an excellent small, but then again, like I really like Sage films, which is basically what this is. The beginning 20 minutes of it are pretty lame where the kids are trying to get hooked up with the, the woman that will eventually like get them kidnapped and taken in there. But like when they're in the church and Michael Parks is in there and all that stuff, like I really do think it's a great, it, begin, it becomes a great film. I actually think that the ending of it is not as bad. Like I know the planned ending of it was to have the actual like four horsemen of the apocalypse and shit like come down. But of course they didn't have the budget for that. So it becomes like, just like there was, it turns, I think it works better. The fact that it turns out it's nothing except like, I think the, their neighbors like fucking with them or something like that. Cause they hate them. So mm -hmm. they're making these trumpet sounds and stuff to convince them that like the, you know, the second coming has happened. Um, and then but you don't the see end, any of that. It's just John Goodman just literally just telling the audience this, right? But that's the all thing, just, that to, that to me works to some degree, just because like the end of the movie is actually Michael Parks in like a jail cell, kind of deliriously talking to himself because he thought you know that was really the end and that you know was going to justify everything that he had done. I don't know. I just I I, I like it. I think it. It works for me. Well, I'm glad you like it, Uncle Boo. I don't, I don't recall hating it, but I only watched it that one time. Michael Parks is a great actor. There's no doubt about that. I like him on almost anything yeah. he's in. But I don't remember absolutely loving it. I don't think. But one that I do remember, and one that I also just watched one time, and it was the movie that caused me to write off Kevin Smith completely after yeah. I saw this fucking movie. I was like, nope, boys, I am not. I'm done. <laughs> I am done with Kevin Smith. This was, and people were talking about the wake and, wake and bake method of filmmaking. This is where it took it to a whole nother level, man. This is like, you remember Hydroponic back in the day, Uncle Bill? This is the, the movie the, that the, he would have fucking of The strain of weed or the, or the man? The man, Hydroponic, jo Joshua, who yeah. matched <laughs> yeah. Josh. We're talking about Tusk, baby. His other why horror movie. Why do you movie. own Tusk? Like, why did Happy <laughs> It's a DVD. Movie? I don't know. I've got it. That's crazy. To I me. should, I should like film a video shitting right on top of it because that's what it deserves. Oh. This is a movie that you just feel, you feel like as it's going on that you're getting dumber and dumber watching it. Like, why am I fucking watching this? But, I'm yeah. gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you the truth about this. <laughs> like, I've only seen this movie one time that I can recall, and I did not hate it. Real quick, uh, but I saw it when it came out. I've got. I didn't watch it again because I just didn't. I just didn't. Uh, but I cannot defend this movie either. <laughs> like I can't. Like I could defend Red State. There, I cannot defend tusk there's no fucking way it's hard what do you I think mean, i completely understand why that? people would hate this movie yeah i'm one of them <laughs> i he did this movie because he got high on his podcast and he read something and then he came up with this stupid idea and Justin Lawn, he plays such a despicable character on purpose where he has his podcast with Haley Joe Osment that I don't know what happened to him. I forgot he was in that movie. Haley Joe Osment looks like he, he looks like somebody that would be on like one of those uh uh pedophile shows or something. Like what was the guy's name? He does name? look like that. Like the Chris, Chris Hansen. Chris Hansen, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> down there, we need to have a talk. Haley Joe. And, and then the podcast they do is like, oh, they saw a video where a guy cut his arm off in like the worst special effect ever. Of this guy somehow slicing his own arm off. And then Michael Parts talks incessantly. It's like, I love Michael Parts as much as the next guy's an actor, but Kim Smith really loves the sound of the guy's voice. So he's like, just write incessant monologues for the guy. While this guy has such dreams, whatever, of a damn walrus, 
and then I'm going to turn you into a walrus, and then how about you, this movie to turn itself out and just how about Tim Swift turn himself to a walrus? I Maybe. Just, let me tell you what happened with Tusk, if you will. Kevin Smith was inspired by weed and the human centipede, baby. And he wanted to make something that really fucked you up if you're high or not. Yeah, you want to know what's weird, though? Is like somebody, Justin Smith just said this. It gets worse after Tusk. <laughs> like, that's what's fucking weird. Dude, like, I don't. Like, Killer Walrus well, is not, like, the worst film he ever did. It's close. It's and very also, close. Johnny Depp's character in the movie. Oh God, yeah, I do remember that. Abysmal, and he would appear in another movie later on. Mm -hmm. But it just his inspector with the thick accent. You can barely understand what he's saying, and none of it was funny. It wasn't scary. It was just stupid. It's a stupid movie. Don't get high on supply. It sure as fuck is stupid. So. Just to let everybody know, though, because we're still going through these. We have a poll up on YouTube.com uh, backslash dead pit where you can go and vote what movie is Kevin Smith's worst movie. And I can only put five options on there. So I tried to pick the five worst, <laughs> which so is really pretty funny. difficult. Um, but, yeah, we're going to be going and uh, tallying those votes up at the end of the show and talking which movie is your least favorite. Um, speaking of which next movie, I got this one in a dollar tree. It stars the Kevin Smith's daughter, Harley Quinn and Lily Rose Depp, Johnny Depp's daughter. Oh my uh, God. Yoga hosers. And I'm going to be honest with you. This is the one movie that's on this list that I have never finished. It's almost impossible to finish. You it's like the one. Me, it's like the one chip challenge, boys. It's like <laughs> the it's yoga like hoser day, challenge. Like back in the day, when you're like, "How far can you get through traces of death or something before you have to turn it off?" Because you asked me like, "How far did you make it in this movie?" And I'm like, "I made it about 30 minutes, and I ain't fucking going any farther into it because it's not getting any better." My it's wife, not like it's gonna turn into fucking Citizen Kane. I put this on, know. and my wife was in the room because I was like, "Oh, this is safe to watch with her, right?" And she was looking at it and she was like, what in the hell are you watching? What is this? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm probably going to turn it off here in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, oh my God. This I didn't is, see the whole thing. What a stupid fucking movie, man. Just like what they were trying to do and just... I'm trying to figure out like how you even talk about this movie because does it have a plot? I, I guess like there's the two girls are like in a cover band called glam thrax, which is a fucking anthrax cover band. Like he's got so much stupid ideas in this movie, man. You just have to shake your head and be like, <laughs> what the fuck? They work at a convenience store and they are really into, I don't eh. know, finger fucking each other. And the, name, the name of the convenience store, A eh to Z. That, <laughs> that's the worst part of the movie, too. Him just doing nonstop Canadian jokes and yep. Canadian accents. Sorry, boot and that. Like, Sorry, boot, yeah, boot that. that. That shit ain't funny, man. Like, it was funny when South Park did it for like 10 minutes. You know, but like, <laughs> it's you can't make a whole movie out of that. He gave it hell though. A five million dollar budget though. It's mentioned up. What there. was five million dollars in this movie? Please tell me. What the cost Nazi five Broadway. million dollars? Thirty-eight thousand is what it made. Yeah, that's too I, much. Wait, <laughs> Dude, that's too many people, man. There's got to be some sort of reason this movie was made. Now, somebody had mentioned, maybe it was you, Matt, we were talking the other day. Was this to get his daughter like a SAG card or something? Or this was like a vehicle for her, I, I get the feeling. Like, this is something that he did for her to get, yeah. some, you know, get some sort of certifications or something so she could get, get more work in Hollywood or something. 
just to have opportunity to make a film for her and her, for her for his daughter and for I guess little girls. I don't know why the hell any girls or any guys or any people with a pulse would see this movie, but uh, I mean, aliens would be like uh, throw this into the sun and burn it. Uh, one of Man. the worst comics I've ever seen in my life. This is worst. this movie has X Pac heat for sure. Yep. I mean, in every way. Yoga, I like X-Pac. I need the X-Pac. It's worse than X-Pac. Yeah, let's think of... Uh, it's got... Um, Mary Horowitz heat. It's, it's got Snitsky heat. <laughs> yoga hosers. What the fuck is that? What does that even mean? Yoga hosers. Well, they do yoga <laughs> with Justin Long, who's got to be in this movie, too. Yeah, and hosers a, like he's the yoga through. instructor. Yeah. Hey hosers, hey you hosers. Oh, so yoga. Hey, oh god, I tell you something else about it. I fucking hate too. While we're just talking about it, like how awful it is. Sure. You know the thing where when they introduce a new character, like a video game screen oh, thing. God. Instacam. Up, I want the Instacam. I, yeah. Oh my god, dude! I want that to reminds me of uh, Matt Hardy version one back in the day. <laughs> <It's> exactly <laughs> what it was. My dude. god. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anytime a character's introduced, it freeze frames and all this glitter and stuff like on a fake not Facebook, not Twitter, but whatever, just their details, their lights. It's so obnoxious, it's so irritating. It stops every single time a character enters. What, what does Kevin Smith say about this movie? Was there a commentary on it or anything? Or what does I mean, what's his defense for this one? Did it for his daughter, I guess. I, I don't think there was a commentary. He kind of stopped doing commentaries <laughs> to his I movies. I wonder why. <laughs> I did it for The Rock. Uh, who knows? But, I mean, it ends with the bad guy is Ralph Garman, who one of the 8,000 podcasts he does. What And he just does a lot of performances of now he sounds like Al Pacino. Now he sounds mm -hmm. like Sylvester Stallone. Now he sounds like Arnold or Adam West for no reason. He just does these impressions for no reason as he's talking about his Nazi bratwurst takeover plan. Mm -hmm. For fuck's sake. <laughs> Apparently his brain did not take the invasion into his body. Apparently it was out of the vicinity when this movie was made. And Johnny Depp's back again to give the worst performance of his career. Wonder if it's this was good. around the time Amber Heard was shitting on his bed. Shitting in the bed. Maybe nah, he, he did. He did because his daughter got the star of the movie, so he did as a favor. Apparently, his daughter is actually probably the best actress in the whole damn movie, from what I watched. But you know, don't you dare, is... don't you dare try to make something good out of this fucking movie. <laughs> I'm gonna well, let's move right on. now. Let's move on. I think that this is Kevin Smith's worst movie, though. In my it opinion. is. Yeah. And... Just like his daughter with her big nose. Just stick it up. <laughs> you want to talk about Maggie Joe Hall? I think Kevin Smith's daughter has a bit of a worse. With his daughter looks nose. like, you know that fish that has that thing that comes like down from his head? <laughs> I thought you were going to say a goblin shark. Swordfish. <laughs> goblin shark. Is that what it is, man? Like goblin fish that has that I, know, I just thought of goblin shark. Bobby nose. <laughs> It is like a goblin something, like a goblin fish or something like that. Yeah, that's what she looks like. But a goblin yeah, from Tom Cruise from Legends. That being said, Maggie Gyllenhaal <laughs> looks like Stewie from Family Guy, like grown into a woman. That big fucking football head. I think Maggie Gyllenhaal's oh, hot, man. You need to quit talking about her. If you think Maggie, she looks better than <laughs> Kevin Smith's daughter. She does look better than Kevin Smith's daughter. <laughs> Let's see that. But. I, <sighs> The same oh, year, on. the same come year, on. Harley Quinn I don't Smith. Know, man. Harley Quinn Smith is in Kevin Smith's episode of Holidays, which is a horror anthology series. One quick question: Why would you name your daughter Harley Quinn when Harley Quinn is like some slutty villainess for the Joker, like Joker slut? Why would you name your daughter that? I'm just wondering if someone could answer that. Yeah, by the time everybody knew like, what that what that was, she probably got made fun of, you know. 
like crazy in school. But oh, you're the name of that Joker slut. Okay, congrats. He should have named her that Joker slut. <laughs> Joker Did you guys? Slut, holidays though. Did you guys see? Uh, no, this I mean, was a anthology movie yeah. based on different holidays, and Kevin Smith's was Halloween. So I was like. Well, fuck, it's set around Halloween. It's going to be a horror movie or a little horror short. Let's check it out. It's bound to be good, boys. Bound to be good. No, I've seen this. No. <laughs> Listen to this, Uncle Bill. You'll want to go see this. I wrote this shit down. So his episode of Holidays, uh, Harley Quinn is one of three young girls that work at this call, like basically uh, doing like sex calls. And shit. Webcam stuff, yeah. Webcam, sex calls, whatever you want to call it, uh, peep shows. And their boss, kind of like their pimp or whatever, is always mean to them. They, he wants, you know, she, he wants them to make more money and work more. They're wanting the night off and everything. And ultimately, it's a re, they get revenge on him by shoving a dildo up his ass. And hooking it to a car battery. Now, how the fuck that would work, I don't know. I don't know how that would work. Um, but they use that dildo that's up inside of him to torture him and shock him and shit. And that is the movie. That sounds about right. Yep. Well, that's like par for the course for what he was doing around this time. Hooking up a dildo to a damn car battery, boys. Yep. Do you imagine the guy that's like that? Acting that scene out. Okay, they're sure. Oh. Oh, it's on. probably a lot like that scene in Chocolate where Henry Thomas is getting fucking ghost raped. He's getting Asian fucked guy. by that Asian guy. Yeah. yeah. Mick Garris is like, you're taking it right now. It's come on. Tell, I'd Jules. love to have been there for just that one day to hear his direction. Yeah. <laughs> They'd probably be like, hey, you seen Yoda hosers? <laughs> I bet you're watching that. And the pain. Yeah, would you now, rather uh, watch yoga hosers again or take a fucking dildo up the ass hooked up to a car battery? <laughs> That's a tough car story. battery. At least that'd be a more interesting story. I'd rather <laughs> fucking sit down on one of them uh, truck hatches, you know, that you hook your boat onto than try to watch yoga hosers again. <laughs> you probably enjoy that. Oh, so... <laughs> Yeah, that was 2016, Holidays and Yoga Hosers. So he, he took a couple years off. And Thank God. the Jay and Silent Bob reboot, word gets out of that. Did that one come out in movie theaters? Because I don't recall ever seeing it in theaters. I don't think it did, man. Like, I just remember it going straight to, like, he, streaming. He would do this thing from now on because I think Batson's red state, he always was bad about critics. He always cried about critics. Even though usually a lot of times critics would like this stuff. Mm -hmm. Now he would do this show where he would move with the movie. People have to pay like an exorbitant, just a lot of money. And then you get like a Q&A afterwards. So he would do that from now on. Show in a theater. The audience will love it because... They paid this much money, they better hope to love it. And then they did a QA afterward. So that's what Kevin Smith started doing. So I think he did it for that movie as well. To me, this movie was like what Clerks 2 should have been. Like, it's like what should have been? Should have. When I say that, I mean like when you think about like what Clerk, Clerks 2 should have been this bad. pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it should have like not worked. Been. Yeah. Yeah, could have been is probably a better way to put it. Um <laughs> that's kind of what the Jay and Silent Bob reboot is to me. It's like everything that you kind of like probably thought was gonna happen in Clerks 2, but didn't, it happens in this movie. Like everybody, first of all, it's depressing to watch because everybody looks so fucking old and just like just washed up. Especially Jason Mewes, man. I can't watch him in these movies with his fucking teeth flying around like that. Like, I just, it's yeah. something about it that's just so depressing and distracting. That he looks really bad in this movie in particular. Like, I don't know what was going on with him then or whatever, but yeah, I mean, he, I think he looks slightly better in the next movie. But yeah, this one, he looked rough. He looked very rough. But I got to say, though, like, of all the more recent Kevin Smith movies, Jay and Silent Bob reboot is probably the best one. 
Yeah, I mean, like it actually does have a couple of like genuine laughs in it. Um, and it's it's not completely meritless, but it's um the it's end bad. the fucking end bad. of the movie too is like because they have the um iron bob, I'll just say that I don't tell you what it is. And I was oh, like, yeah. God damn boys, what in the fuck? <laughs> but essentially it is a reboot. It's the same movie as Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back. I mean, it's the same plot, yep. at least. Um, cameos galore in this movie. Holy shit, I couldn't write them all down. There was so many. Um, oh, yeah. You know, characters from uh, Chase and Amy, uh, they bring back in this. And, dude, like, I don't know how old. Um, fuck, what's her name? Uh, Jory Lauren Adams. Yeah, she is not aged well though. She looks totally different. Um, you know what the biggest problem with this movie is though, other than the fact Jason Muses like teeth are flying out of his head, um, is that he cast his fucking daughter as the lead. Yeah, yeah. she has a significant role in this one. Like, why? Like why? I get. I, I mean, at this point, I guess he's just like you know, screw it. I'm just going to nepotism. Yeah. Ne I'm just, just going to make movies for her. Cause nobody else is going to do it. So method man and red man. Is, where the fuck they, <laughs> they find him at? Where the fuck they find yeah. uh, <laughs> uh Fuck. What's her name? Uh, uh, Shannon, uh, from Elizabeth. saying out live. No, oh, the, Molly uh, Shannon, Molly yeah. Shannon, Molly oh. Shannon. Where in the hell they find her. And I haven't seen her in forever. I don't know. They found Chris Jericho. Val Kilmer. Somebody is... <laughs> since since Kevin Smith is streaming right now, you should, somebody should like take the link to this and <laughs> chat tell him we're doing a retrospective. <laughs> he wants to pop in and say they don't this. let you post links on on there, unfortunately. But oh, that's a shame. Here's um, the thing with this movie: is like Kevin knows, like deep down, this is bad because you listen to the dialogue. Like, there's a bit where he literally says, like, what kind of broken fucks still want to watch this Jay and Sam Bob BS? And, like, at the end, it's like, you killed your own movie career, and I'm done with Kevin Smith. Like, he, it's as if he knows, as if he's like, will people buy into this? Oh, my God, that she bought into this. It's like, I mean, you it's know, as despite... if he's trolling. Despite the fact that everybody pretty much knows he's incapable of making a film worth shit anymore, like those characters still have like a an audience, a small audience nowadays, but like I mean, an audience of people that will watch that shit no matter what. And it, for I, that I, audience, I feel bad for them. I think that Kevin Smith has fans, but they're more or less just a fan of his like podcasts and stuff like that. I mean, they'll probably watch his movies, yeah. but I think even the more hardcore Kevin Smith fans will tell you that his recent movies are not very good. I swear to you. Oh man, no, they'll get offended to death. They, 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 they will. told me that. <laughs> I, I, I believe that like in the past 10 years, like he's actually better at doing those uh, standups than he, than he is as a director. Like I would a hundred times rather watch him do like one of those than I would watch any of these films. Not anymore. Now he's just like, Hey guys. Well now, well, now he's Kevin woke Smith. as fuck. But back, <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> now he's, he's crying. Like said, now he's crying over, uh, what was it? Marvel. Every movies. Star Wars trailer, Marvel trailer, flash episodes. Listen, I get that you may get emotional and stuff, but God, you need you don't need to be crying at every single damn thing. Uh, but come on, it ain't that serious, Kevin. You make movies for a living. You watch. <laughs> why are you a baby bitch? Like I just just a bit. Why is he such a bitch in heat? And did he get out of the heat and out of the kitchen and get out of my face? And I make a movie again. Just retire, please. The sick and tired of his can't even say fat ass, thin ass, just his sorry ass. Tired of his ass. Get out of my face, dude. God. What's funny is though, like, Napoleon Dynamite. God. 
he lost all that weight and stuff, but he didn't buy any new clothes. So he's still wearing these clothes that are like gigantic on him. What's the deal with that? I don't know security. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean, this movie is like, it's bad, but compared to, you know, his other movies in the past 10 years or so, it's probably the, the best one of those, but that's not really saying a whole lot. I mean, uh, Chris Jericho's in his fucking movie, man. Mm-hmm. You can't escape Chris Jericho. No matter There's where no you go. There's no escaping him. No. <laughs> fucking doing his worst yeah. Bruce Dickinson impersonation in concert. You're like, I want. I just want to turn on like a fucking super hyper gory movie. I'm gonna put on Terrifier Two. Chris Jericho's fucking in it. Like, why? Wow. <laughs> He's in everything. I like, fucking hate Chris Jericho, man. Like it was one point in time when like, I really enjoyed his stuff, but God, he just fucking needs to go away. He's got go he away. Does. Heat he worse does. than worse than Xbox ever had. Like, I just do not want to see him anymore. Do anything. He needs to go re- retire. He can even go on tour with Fozzie as long as they're not on TV or anything. Him, as long as I don't have to see him. him and Paul White need to fuck it, shut it down pack it up take the tents down raise the stakes up get the fuck out of just wrestling nobody wants to see either one of those people anymore man he needs no. to go with the thigh master or something just he turned into like with chris chest Hero master or something. Or something. <laughs> what the fuck happened to his <laughs> chest man it looked like it looks like they actually said that it was uh I think it was a chop that the big show gave him or something like that. Really? I think it's what he said. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, like probably 10 years ago, that's what had happened. Mm. Wow. But made him doodle too much like Jello. I fucking hate Chris Jericho. Um, <laughs> so I guess we can continue on. Well, there's only one more really. Yeah. Well, there, there's two more actually, but the other one, tell us the story behind that, Matt, because you explained it better than anybody could to me. The killed oh, kill Roy or whatever. Kilroy was here. So long story short, for those out there who don't know what an NFT is, I could barely explain it either, but Kev Smith wanted to make a movie. It's in a horror anthology film. Chris Jericho was in that as well as a racist YouTuber. And Kilroy is supposed to be, I think, some graffiti painting from maybe World War II that comes alive. And I don't know the details, just barely anyone has seen the film. Because he released it as an NFT. Right. And you can't really see it unless you know NFTs work. And then you have to pay like $180 to get it anyway. <laughs> and... Why he thought to do that, I have no idea. Although I'm playful because I don't have to watch it, but it's not been bootlegged either. I don't. That's what I was. I was talking to no. you about. I think the other day, like it's not on a torrent yeah. site or anything. So the movie does exist. Now yeah. there's a, very, a few loopholes you have to go in to get it, like you know, with this cryptocurrency shit or whatever. Yeah. It's just the craziest thing, man. I mean, it just tells you what yeah. kind of, yeah. This might have been at the height of his just smoking weed constantly phase. But isn't he off that now, though? Didn't I hear somebody say something like that? that he's not smoking weed anymore. Supposedly. Know. Yeah. Supposedly, yeah. It's... Yeah, I am a bully. Fuck Kevin Smith. <laughs> <laughs> But there's a trailer for it. Like I think like there's a, a trailer man. for it online, right? The Kilroy was here. <laughs> there yeah. is, yeah. His daughter is in it. Chris Jericho is in it. A few others. She is. Why wouldn't she be? So the next one was one that I can remember because it was just a, you know, it was a little bit over a year ago, I think, when it came out. Clerks 3. And that was the last one that I watched for this you know, preparing for this retrospective here. And I, I had been kind of spoiled on the ending of it. So I kind of knew what was coming and dude, like, 
this is I was thinking this is supposed to be a comedy movie, right? Because the beginning of the movie, not. yeah, the beginning what it's probably the opening what ten minutes of the movie. Randall has a heart attack, nearly dies. Right? Yeah. We find out that Rosario Dawson, his, uh, you know, her character from Clerks Two, is dead, and their unborn baby died. Dante's yep. still recovering from that. Um, it's probably the biggest downer of a comedy movie that I've ever seen in my life. He, see, he sees her ghost, and I guess her ghost is cheating on him or something. <laughs> yeah, her ghost she keeps talking about a bunch of people in hell or something. Yeah. Ghost Zario. Like, that's one of the most ridiculous fucking things, man. She just keeps coming along and, like, talking to him and stuff. But then... At first, she's like, you know, you got so much to live for. And then eventually, she's just like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> just, <laughs> pretty much. So, yeah. But the Randall character, though, the whole thing is, is he has escaped this. It was a Widowmaker heart attack, the same one that Kevin Smith had, that he survived, had 20% chance of surviving. And he was like, mm-hmm. well, I've wasted my whole life, really, in this store. They're back at the quick stop, by the way, somehow. Did they ever explain that? Or did I miss that? They bought yeah. it. At Clerks 2, they, yeah. they bought and reopened it. And it's going to be their business now. Okay, they rebuilt it or whatever. Yeah. So so his big idea is, well, since I've wasted my life, I want to make a movie about how much I've wasted my life. And we'll just reenact all these moments. And most of them were from the first movie. They recreated a lot of the scenes in the first movie. Um, and then there we go. We're off to the races. Because apparently their movie. entire life was the first movie. Like nothing else happened in their life except right. that first that movie. That one day. Yeah, that one day. <laughs> I do think no that, parts of life. that Blue Ray Addict is right, though. It's like some sort of like attempt for him to make a Clerks movie that fits into the narrative of the Hollywood bullshit kind of you know, stuff that he's into now. It's just like, so. How so? Because like everything, like in the other two movies, like it was about having fun and, you know, and goofing around at work and shit like that. And in this movie, there's all these life fucking lessons and there's all this woke bullshit and there's all this fucking you know, mean, there's got to be meaning and all this stuff. It's like, I suppose he probably thought he was making like a mature film, but what it really just comes across as is just him jerking off, like just jerking himself off, it, it, trying to make something heavy handed and more than he could uh, is able to do really. I, this was a very hard watch. I watched this movie at work. And, and I, I knew what was going to happen at the end. I was like, oh, what? Nah. Why would you make a movie like this? I mean, who, who likes to watch shit like this? You know, because I don't care who you are. You've had somebody knows family member, or somebody else that has dealt with this shit in real life. And this is not funny. I don't think. And this is not what Clerks is supposed to be, in my opinion. You know, I mean, you can have some drama here and there, but this is a movie that I'll never watch ever again. Like, I have no interest in ever watching it. And, hey, the guys in it, Brian O'Halloran and Jeff Anderson stuff, they do a great job in it. They're fine in it, but it's just the material. It was a very difficult watch. Well, the people that defend it, they say it's deep and heartfelt and emotional. And I, to me, it was just more annoying, aggravating, and irritating. I mean, I can't think of one moment I laughed at. Uh, it was more infuriating, especially if you like the characters. Mm-hmm. The message is all confusing because no by sense. the end of the movie, yeah, it's like, okay, 
I'm spoiling it. Blame me, folks. You blame me. Dante has a heart attack, and then he's what? Then all the clerks too. The story is Randall realizing maybe I should not be as much of a prick. I grew a little bit of a heart. Yeah. I let myself. That's completely out the window as the same he, writer. He's like the biggest douchebag prick in this movie who only like does mm -hmm. everything for himself all the way up to the very end, you know, in, in the way that it ends and everything too. So they basically destroy that character, like any kind of character arc that he could have had that would have been, you know, a good send away for him is destroyed in this movie. So well, they destroy two characters, really. Yeah, when he's when he's in the hospital, uh, you know, they don't know what's going on with him or whatever. Randall's like, oh, I got to get back and start working on my movie again. He'll be fine, man. It ain't going to be now. Yep. They ain't that never. No, nobody fucking does that. But then they try to make your heart feels like, I got to show him the movie we made. I don't think he gives a shit. Like he's dying. Don't, don't they don't say care. something like they tell him uh, he starts finally care about Dante after he knows that he uh, sold his half of the the store oh, or yeah. something like that to yeah. fund them? <laughs> oh, well, let me go grab my take... MacBook and I want to edit some shit and show him. The fact yes. it took that, not Dante had this whole rant, rightfully so, on Randall. That didn't change his mind. It was someone going, oh, yeah, he sold this. That changes it. And it didn't matter because I don't think Dante woke up to see his stupid ass movie. <laughs> and when you never even see the movie he edited, you see the first movie. And then, like you said, first she's like, you have stuff to live for. And then it's like, nah, give up. <laughs> Just die. Stop what dying. kind of message is that? <laughs> Uh, what message is that for that's people the, like that's the, the invasion usa me? message Matt. wake up <laughs> time to die tell rostov it's time to die <laughs> apparently and then it's like he is a forced ghost to tell and then like was it is it the final line like he wasn't supposed to be here today oh, oh god <laughs> yeah they go through with yeah, his yeah. funeral and everything, and the, you know, the graveside ceremony. <laughs> he wasn't supposed to be here today. I'm positive that Kevin Smith thought this was an amazing ending to this series, though. I just know he did. Like, after he was done, he was probably like, proud as punch. This fucking movie. It's heartbreaking. <laughs> uh, and he wants to do a fourth film. A fourth clerks. Oh, I'm good. Lord help us. So we're going to go back to the YouTube page. We had a total of 230 votes on which movie was the worst Kevin Smith movie. At number one, by far, with 50% of the vote, Yoga Hosers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But number two... And this is interesting because all these are kind of close. Clerks 3 was the number two worst movie. Cop Out, number three. And Tusk and Jan Silent Bob are tied. Jan Silent Bob reboot are tied for number four. That's that, that list. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. So, but boys, we got through it in a two hour time. I can't believe it because we spent. Yeah, about the first half hour just on like the first couple of movies. So, um, but yeah, overall as a career, Kevin Smith, it's a strange one, man. Mm -hmm. And do you think that there's any chance in the next few years that he could redeem himself at all? Is there any hope at all? Well, uh, the idea that he's off the drugs might help. Um, but I, don't, I mean, it's hard to say, man. And how long has it been since you made a good movie? If if you go by the last one that I actually liked, we're going back. Let's see, whenever fucking Red State came out, two thousand eleven. 
So it's been 13 years since he made a decent, but I don't know. <laughs> Do you come back from that and just put out a fucking banger? I don't know. Uh, don't be. I don't think so, because Kevin Smith has an echo chamber of a big group of people that thinks everything he touches turns to gold. And now he's in the Hollywood where everyone, these folks love him because he likes to do all these podcasts, all these channels, all these YouTube videos where he pimps and promotes every superhero movie, every comic book movie. That's another thing too, Matt. You're right though. When he started getting into all that with the comic book store and all, and and that's another part of it that I don't like either. Like, cause he really became a shield a, for all that. Yeah. He's a different guy. I mean, so be it. That's his choice. But I would say this for an NRS experiment for anyone after the show, watch an old interview with Kevin Smith or the first evening with Kevin Smith, just look at his cadence, the way he talks to people, the way he talks to the audience. Where if you watch the first evening with Kevin Smith, the guy here, he's calm. He talks like a regular person. When he does an interview now, he's very animated. It's like he's playing a character, a caricature. The old Kevin Smith would make fun of the new Kevin Smith. The old Kevin Smith, they would talk about how much of a fool the new Kevin Smith is. With his bug eyes and his hands going up, it's a completely different person. And i that's the guy he wants to be, so be it. I don't have to enjoy his journey anymore. He well, can he have it. He don't want to enjoy his journey guys. with him. <laughs> Evidently, though, look, if you go on IMDb, Moose Jaws is still on there. Yeah, he's and, supposed to be working on that, isn't he? Like, uh, it's in development. In production is Twilight of the Mall Rats. It's what it says, at least. So, um, yeah, he's been wanting to do that, but Universal has kind of not let him so far since they had Mall Rats. Shit, why would they? He wanted like, to do like a show on it. Like, what in the past fifteen years has shown them that he can make any kind of like, decent fucking movie or make money or anything? <laughs> he has he has a diehard audience that will love everything he does and i think as long as that audience keeps going if you give him a certain amount of budget he'll make a profit each time with the way he does he's it. loaded he's got you know he's got all he needs so he's not really and he's probably makes some uh, enough off these podcast shows and he's got his own movie theater and everything at screen stuff so he has no reason or want to really make any good movies anymore i don't guess uh, i don't think he's capable yeah. though like i just think like after a point in time you know it happens a lot with bands and stuff too like they get on a roll for a few years great album after great album after great album but at some point they just it, you know they fall off and it, this is a major fall though man like at one point in time, and I think Uncle Bill mentioned this, he was kind of right up there with almost like Tarantino or something like that. People were like, just. It's just ridiculous. Excited. Like even, even if you're like a huge fan of his and you love his movies and stuff, if you can't objectively look at these movies that he's put out over the last 10 fucking years and see how shitty they are and like see how like just completely different they are and a fall from grace that he's had just as him as a person too if you can't see those things i don't know what to tell you like i mean i suppose there's some people that will just believe and see whatever they want to see but these movies suck ass they're a complete like just shadow of the type of films that he used to make and God bless you if you still like him, but you, you've you got to be smoking more weed than he ever thought about fucking smoking to like this shit. <laughs> Toxic positivity, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, man, it's been fun. We appreciate everybody in the chat and everything. The chat has been crazy busy the whole night, and I'm sorry we haven't really kept up with it too much. Michael Raj Paul got us a Canadian 275, boys. Woo! Oh, shit. Is that uh kevin smith so, aged out i'm sorry that we talked about yoga hosers michael rashball he is canadian <laughs> after all 
Sorry about Sorry that. About that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we all had the same idea, the same fucking time. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, uh, Matt, what you got coming up on your channel, man? Uh, I know you're always uploading stuff on a daily basis. Seems like. Yeah, same old, same old. Uh, reviews coming up for films like Malibu Shark Attack. <laughs> or uh yeah <laughs> state eater 2 the drug buster you have to go back and look at which ones you're like i can't remember this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but yeah state eater 2 the drug buster where lorenzo Lamas has a wheelchair fight on a rooftop with another guy in a wheelchair <laughs> hell yeah while yeah. horse shot yeah. the that's better than, uh, cheering better, along. better than wheelchair basketball bulls um <laughs> so Next thing that we've got coming up is we're doing the uh, the Exploit Nation show, Uncle Will. Tell everybody about that because I've been trying to catch up on some of these movies and fuck, man. Jim Wynorski, that's another guy that has to be smoking some great amounts of weed back in the day. Yeah, that's, I would say that's fairly accurate. Um, so on Sunday night at 10 PM, we are going to do the sword and sorcery movies for exploit nation, which includes the beast master, which includes barbarians with the barbarian brothers. Uh, it includes red Sonya with Arnold and also includes uh death stalker Two. That's the Jim Minorsky film that you're referencing oh. to, uh, which by the way, I was noticing probably has the best overall poster for any like it's not accurate for the movie film. though it has nothing to do with the movie but the poster is amazing yeah they should have called that movie swords and titties it should have been the name of it. <laughs> that's our movie if we make a movie like this <laughs> we're gonna make swords a sword and, and sword. <laughs> well i mean that's appropriate because they're doing a remake now of death they Stalker. are yeah i saw that we're so uh, psycho gore man is doing hmm. it good yeah um yeah, so we've got that coming up. There's a big vinegar syndrome sale that's a week from tonight, like a pre-sale. So that's going to be a huge show. And Mark Burton, we want to welcome him. Brand new baller and shot caller, boys. We've got the, all four spots taken up again. So uh, thank you, Mark. And uh, I think that's about it, right? Anything else you guys wanted to mention on here? No. All right. Well. Um, we appreciate everybody uh, tuning in the night and everything. And hey, this is not horror, so this is kind of out of our uh, what they call it, wheelhouse, usually, Uncle Bill. But hopefully, you know, this is a request from Carta. Uh, I, th I think we did okay. Hopefully, everybody enjoyed it. But uh, we appreciate everybody tuning into the chat. Matt's always good having you on here. We will have to do it again soon. And uh, Uncle Bill, won't you lick my ice? Buddy, fuck. You come over here and tongue bathe my balls. Look, balls. I'm going to pour some gray poupon on my butt crack. And I want you mm -hmm. to go. Blah, 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 blah. Sponsored by Manscaped. Yeah. You know, I wonder balls, why we don't have any sponsors now that I think about it. Probably because we say shit like I that. I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah. We'll catch you guys next but time hey, over. Want... Go ahead. What? Yeah, go ahead. I was going if you want your ass eaten. The manscape that'd be a good advertisement. For oh. you, you gotta be don't like yeah. that pesky hair in your mouth. Yeah, manscape like, will do nobody you likes spitting those little ass hairs out. Oh, god, the ball deodorant, ball deodorant oh, will help matters. <laughs> That's a good way to end it. Bad pit. Dot com. Give us the thumbs up. Off you butt. Like subscribe and if you subscribe here's something else you can do once you subscribe you can click the bell notification right and it'll notify you anytime that dead pit puts up new shit poor dog I really don't give a fuck no, I want you to I want you to let's <laughs> keep our community growing here on I, YouTube I don't, I don't like it I don't want you to do nothing listen I need to do that no don't you yeah. dare do it Thumbs up, subscribe, and click that bell. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpits.com. Simply the best horror shirts 
on Tee Public, there are others, but they all suck. You can get some Dead Pit Radio shirts. You can get Last South on the left. The Hills have eyes. Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wait, you can't say Texas Chainsaw. All kinds of shirts, folks. You're going to love them. Shop.deadpit.com. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on. In addition to the midweek shows, fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears started at only $1. We ain't 